Hey everyone, welcome to this week's video at Visiting Dieter's Countryside. This week's video will be a travel guide with travel tips for the Netherlands. So yeah, for the ones who are new here, my name is Manon and I am Dutch. And on this channel and on my website, you will be discovering the Netherlands beyond the crowds and will get tips and tricks by a local, which is me. Don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe with the little notification bell so you won't miss any of my other upcoming videos. And let's head into the video. The first thing that is really useful to know is that public transportation in the Netherlands is really good. And with really good, I mean really good. We are really spoiled here, so if there is a train later or something, Dutch people are easy to judge and say, oh my god, it's late again. But in general, trains, buses, trams, metros, um, stuff like that, everything is in, and even ferries, everything is in general on time. And um, the best way to get or well, to use all the public transportation is by a public transportation card that we use in the Netherlands and it's called an OV chip card. Uh, OV chip card. And basically you can top it up, you can put some money on the card and you can use it for the metro, for the trams, for the buses and for the trains in the Netherlands. So for instance when you're coming to the train station you need to swipe your card or push your card basically to a pole and then it checks you in. You also need to check it out again by the end of your journey. And when you, for instance, when you go from the train to the metro, you need to check in at the train, check out at the train, at the train, check in at the metro, and check out at the metro again. But yeah, I will link a, a website where you can get the OV chip card and the best locations to get them. I will link that website down below so you know exactly when to get it. It's really useful. We all use it. Plus, it saves you money because when you buy an OV chip card. It saves you the one euro on a paper ticket every single time and a paper ticket from the ticket machine. So those cost one euro extra. You're welcome. By the end of the week you can get an extra ice cream. So there are quite a lot of apps, travel apps and just normal apps that we use in the Netherlands that are really really useful when you're traveling to the Netherlands. Um, there's one great app for the weather, well there are two, but one is more precise. And that one is Buien Alarm. And if you download that one, you'll know exactly when it's going to rain. Like within two hours you see the exact, um, if it's going to rain or not, exactly. stuff like that. And it's almost always correct. And then you have another one, and that is called uh, Buien Radar. And there you can see um, more hours in advance. And then there's another app that is a public transportation app which is called 9292 and you'll see the latest updates on, on routes, the best route, the amount the, the journey costs, the quickest route to your destination, etc. The entire country almost uses that app so definitely check it out. Something else that you need to know is that we cycle a lot and I made a made another video about cycling in the Netherlands and tips about that that you can check out right here but I just want to say a few things um, if you've never cycled before do not think of trying cycling in any bigger Dutch city because it's it can be dangerous because there's lots of traffic to look out for so you've got pedestrians you have cars you have buses you've got trams other cyclists scooters and then you also have the the traffic rules that you need to keep in mind so just keep that in mind also bike paths are there for a reason if you're a pedestrian do not cross a bike path without walking if you're a cyclist stay on the bike path also you use your you know, on the steering wheel, you have a bell. You only use it if you want to pass someone. Do not use it just for fun, okay? Good. So another thing that you kind of need to know is 
tipping. In the Netherlands we don't really tip. You can tip if you want to. Don't tip if you don't want to. I usually don't tip. So yeah, just, you know, if you want to, do it, okay? But if you don't want to, or if you have a low budget, that's perfectly fine as well. And if you do want to tip, do not come here with outrageous percentages such as 20% and stuff. That's mad. It feels like, it almost feels like stealing. <laughs> so yeah, you can tip if you want to. Don't have to tip if you don't want to. Another thing that is uh, pretty useful is the fact that we use the Euro in the Netherlands. So not any other currency, but we use the Euro as our currency. The languages that we speak in the Netherlands are Dutch and Frisian. Frisian is mainly spoken in the province of Friesland. Um, so yeah, there are, in the Netherlands, there are two official languages, Dutch and Frisian, or Fries in Dutch. But um, we all learn English since, you know, at primary school and then in high school we need to continue it with some other languages as well, so. Yeah, if you talk to us in English and you're safe. <laughs> if there's an emergency, you can call 112 or 112. That's the emergency number. You know, that's only with the real, real emergencies. Not if you, I don't know, cut your finger or if you fell off your bike. Well, it depends on how you fell off your bike. If you, if someone, if you saw that someone almost or maybe broke the neck or something else or the hip or something. Please call 112. <laughs> so, seasons are all well, here in the Netherlands, definitely here. So, um, in June, that's the start, the end of June is the start of the summer season, which lasts until September. And then from September until uh, December, it's autumn. From December until March, it's winter. And from March until June, it's spring. So yeah, um, autumn is usually very windy uh, and rainy. Summer is um, less rainy, pretty sunny uh, in general. And spring is lovely. <laughs> There's nothing else I can say. Yeah, spring is lovely. <laughs> spring has um, also still quite low temperatures and a lot of wind, but the sun is up. So. Yeah, and winter in the Netherlands is um, windy, stormy, cold. Well, the, the wind is cold. The weather has been uh, not as cold uh, for the past years. Which is a shame because I want winter, I want snow, I want to ice skate. But climate change! So yeah. But no matter what season you visit in the Netherlands, it's a great time. However, um, high season in the Netherlands is mainly around July and August and as well as tulip season in the Netherlands which is um, from around mid-April until the end of April. So those are the main uh, periods that people come to visit. So those are also the periods that accommodation is often fully booked and that it's more expensive. So there's something that you all know about in the Netherlands and it's still a field. Most people visit in the Bollestrijk area, which is Lissa Hillegom, the Keukenhoft, the biggest flower garden in the world, or one of the biggest. But there are more places to visit in the Netherlands if you want to see tulip fields and they're way, way, way less tourist. So, if you want to visit tulip fields in the Netherlands, I would highly recommend you not to go to the south of the Netherlands, well, not to go to the Bollestrijk area, but instead head to the provinces of Zeeland, North Holland, or Flevoland. I will link some um, guides down below so you can check them out. Something else that I would absolutely advise you to do is to not be afraid to go beyond just Amsterdam or Rotterdam or stuff, you know, places that a lot of people go to. I understand that it's fun to visit because there is a lot to do there. However, there are so much more places to visit in the Netherlands that also deserve your attention. So yes, please do so. Again, I will link some places to visit down below so you can check them out. Trust me, 
you want to visit them. <laughs> really. I don't know if you're used to it or not, but in the Netherlands we use 24, 24 hour time. Um, when I first heard that some countries didn't do it, looking at you, United States, um, I was confused. Especially when you call it mil military time. I'm like, no. It's how a clock works, you know, 24 hours. But, uh, <laughs> but yeah, so we do use 24 hour time. If you're visiting the Netherlands and arriving in the Netherlands by airplane, then you either arrive at Amsterdam Schiphol Airport, which is the international airport in the Netherlands, at Eindhoven, which is where low-budget airlines such as uh, Ryanair and Transavia um, fly to, uh, Rotterdam De Hague Airport, which is also where um, Transavia flies to, um, Groningen Eelde Airport, also where uh, budget airlines fly to and Maastricht Aachen. Aachen? Aachen? Anyway, Maastricht Airport. <laughs> so that's also where um, budget airlines fly to. And depending from there you can use public transport to reach your final destination. Really easy. Public transport in the Netherlands is great as I've told you before. So do not be afraid to use it. Something else that um, it's quite useful to know is that we do not eat dinner late in the Netherlands. We eat generally at home between 5 and 7.30 in the evening and then when we go out for dinner it's around 8 o'clock or something. And restaurant kitchens usually close at around 11 or sometimes earlier, sometimes a bit later but around that time so if you you know, looking forward to eating dinner really late. The kitchens are closed and um, usually they start cleaning up a bit earlier before the kitchens close. So they will say that you can order a dessert or something, but they won't make you the big meals anymore. So just be aware that if you visit the Netherlands that it would be great to eat dinner at around 8 <laughs> or 9 in the evening. Something else that is really helpful is that when you hear um, the alarms of um, fire trucks or police cars or um, ambulances, you need to get out of the way because you're disturbing that is not a good feat. So no, do not disturb it. Do not get in the way. Just get out of their way. We, so yeah, we really take that highly here in the Netherlands. Another tip that I would give you is to buy a local SIM card because it saves you so much money. Do make sure that your phone is unlocked though because otherwise it's a problem. <laughs> there are a few things that you need to know about Dutch people and Dutch culture in general but the thing is that we don't really do small talk and we're very direct people so um, do not ask us how we are because we know you don't care and we don't know you so we only ask people that we know how they are um, because with them we know is genuine and that is something that we value so no small talk <laughs> there are lots of things that um, you should and shouldn't do in the Netherlands and the Dutch stereotypes and I will link a video here or something that you can check out and then you will discover exactly what other things you shouldn't do when you're visiting the country. Some tips, some extra tips that I would give you is that visiting King's Day, the birthday of our king, on the 27th of April is always a great idea. And then the entire country is one big festival and party and one sea of orange, which is our national color. And then during Christmas, we celebrate three days of Christmas. So the Christmas Eve, first Christmas day, and second Christmas day. And there are a few other uh, important dates where the entire country is free, which also increases, of course, the price of hotels and stuff like that. But yeah, there are great times to visit, so I understand, but still. And the last step that I would give you is about food. So Dutch food isn't really popular. Uh, traditional Dutch food is mainly potatoes and vegetables mashed together. That's mainly during winter. Personally, I love it. That mashed together stuff is called stampelt. 
And some samples have a lot of flavor and others a zero. So yeah, it depends how people make them. But Dutch food is not really known for a lot of flavor. <laughs> However, do try it because there are quite a few good Dutch restaurants to find in Amsterdam. So I would definitely recommend you to do that as well as um, taking some fried Dutch snacks out of a vending machine which is something that you always need to do and yeah also get some Indonesian and Suriname food in the Netherlands wherever you are because that food is amazing and we have a lot of um, due to the dark history of the Netherlands we have um, quite some people from Suriname and from Indonesia that brought their food here. So yeah, that was it for this week's video guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to comment, like, share and subscribe with the little notification bell so you won't miss any of my other upcoming videos. And I will see you next week.